Hi, everybody. This is your Transformers read-along book. Every time you hear this sound, it means it's time to turn the page in your storybook. Now, if you are ready, we will start the story, Storms of Destruction. Don't forget to turn the page every time you hear the sound. In their robotic mode, Optimus Prime, the magnificent and courageous leader of the Autobots, and his aide Prowl, streaked over the vast Pacific Ocean, engines screaming. What is our ETA at the next destination, Prowl? At this speed, Chief, the computer says we should make the island of Sumatra in three minutes. Excellent! Fuel is precious, and we must conserve. It has been a long inspection flight, and we must still return to base. Within minutes, they had landed on the island and immediately surveyed the desolation of what had been hundreds of square miles of lush green Sumatran jungle. Optimus Prime spied the oily black substance under the white residue. It again confirmed his worst fears. The Decepticons are back at work. Megatron's evil deeds are once more resulting in devastation and misery. I must stop him. Meanwhile, Deep within the enormous underground Decepticon development center, Megatron, the fiendish, vile leader of the Decepticons, gloated as he inspected the latest modifications made by his engineers on a machine stolen from the Earthlings. As Megatron listened to the roar of the huge turbine drives, Soundwave, his aide, watched respectfully. Yelling to be heard over the machine, Megatron announced, with this new tunnel boring mole machine, I shall bring to bear everything I have learned these past months. Absolutely, mighty Megatron. We are fully prepared now to go forward with the master plan. We? What have you learned, you cassette stuff wimp? You know only what I tell you, and I have not revealed my grand design to anyone yet. <laughs> In their robotic mode, Megatron and Soundwave thundered over the endless jungle carpet of the Mato Grosso in Brazil. As they landed and thrashed through the thick jungle foliage, birds and monkeys scattered, shrieking with fear and anger. Following behind his leader, Soundwave moaned, Master, my drives, my sensors, must we always be in a jungle? This humidity plays havoc with us. Megatron ordered as he halted abruptly. Do you recognize this place? Spread out before them was a large expanse of new low jungle growth. It's our old satellite launch complex. The one the Autobots destroyed. Exactly. A sickening memory, but hardly a setback. This time they will not be so lucky. They will never stop my pursuit of conquest. No matter how hard they try, I shall obliterate them in the end. The oil I shall squeeze from under this jungle will fuel my forces and lift us from the shackles of this puny planet to total domination of the universe. Choked up by Megatron's speech, Soundwave could hardly talk. Oh, powerful one. Oh, Master, your visions of the destruction of those Autobot junk hit bring tears to my eyes. Ah! You are nothing but a sentimental bag of both, Soundwave! The plink of a poisoned dart bouncing off Soundwave's chest surprised both of them. A hundred yards away, the Indian holding the blowgun was no less surprised. It's only one of those carbon-based primitives! Megatron snarled. Days later, Megatron was ready to put his final plan into effect as he stood on the command deck, watching Soundwave guide the mole machine under the depths of the Pacific toward the continental shelf of South America off the coast of Peru. Ah, Soundwave. I have so ably proven that beneath these earth jungles are lock pools of oil created by millions of years of decaying vegetation. And there's no need to drill for it. Simply by pumping salt water under it, the glory and ooze of black fuel will be forced to the surface. Therefore, we will bore a hole under this ocean floor, go beneath that jungle, and create a lake of oil larger than any that has ever been seen before. <sighs> Brilliant as usual, Master. And it turns the green jungle into a desert, too. 
But as the mole machine's boring bit tore through the earth, the tunnel it created suddenly collapsed with a roar, taking with it the ancient Inca city of Machu Picchu and making part of the Andes Mountains the bottom of a new salt lake. Megatron stood on the edge of the lake, glaring menacingly at Soundwave. You take field, idiot! Look at that! We will have to start a new tunnel! Master, I only followed the internal coordinate path you approved after your survey in the jungle. Approved? I approved of nothing. Are you suggesting that I am capable of such stupidity? Uh, of course not, mighty Megatron. Then Soundwave's eyes widened as he looked up. Master, look! That Autobot spy must have spotted us when we were back in the jungle. They were waiting for us! At that moment, Optimus Prime gave orders over the command channel to his fleet of Autobots. Attack! Rid the universe of the foul stench of Decepticon leadership and his lackey, too! Megatron raised his fist to the sky. You will have to do better than this, Optimus Prime! What catastrophe awaited the Earth and the universe if Megatron's diabolical course of action was not stopped? In Autobot Command Headquarters, tension was running high as Optimus Prime asked, Well, Prowl, anything? Headset on, Prowl studied the computer printout intently as he listened. When Optimus Prime touched his shoulder, he turned and pulled aside his headset. Nothing yet, Chief, he replied. No vibrations or radar profile return for hours now. Their mole machine is definitely not active at the moment. What do you suppose they're up to? Nothing good. Then, moving away to be alone and to think, Optimus Prime muttered, Make your move, Megatron. Show yourself so I can crush you once and for all. How am I doing this time, Master? Soundwave had to shout over the roar of the turbine drives and the grinding of the bore bit as the mole machine chewed its way under the jungle above. Don't pat yourself too hard, Soundwave, or you'll knock your cassette out! <laughs> yeah, well, this is the last tunnel in the network, isn't it? There's salt water under the whole place now. At Autobot Command, the laser sonar return had been knocking Prowl's ears off for hours. He sat back, removed the headset, and turned to Optimus Prime. They stopped, Chief! That's only the ante, Prowl. The game has just begun. I'm waiting for Megatron's bet. Then I'll cover it and force his hand. On the surface, from the deck of the mole machine, Megatron watched the rising oil cover bushes and lap at tree trunks. Birds screamed overhead. Animals bellowed and crashed about in a frenzy, seeking the higher ground. It is a wonderful sight, exclaimed Megatron. Yes, Master. Oh, look! One of those primitive humanoids crying for help. Transferring themselves to the Decepticon defoliator craft, from which they could get a better view of the destruction they had caused, Megatron and Soundwave maneuvered slowly through the jungle. The craft's enormous hover fans ripped the air, their powerful downthrust bending trees until they snapped like twigs and blowing protesting birds and animals left and right like so much debris. That's the geographic low point of the lake, Master. Soundwave pointed out. It's the perfect loading site. Every last drop of oil will flow to this area until the lake is dry. Defoliate them! Ten square miles! I want to bring in four oil transporters at a time! To raise the oil in the jungle, Megatron had to draw off most of the huge warm ocean current along the coast of South America. Moving in to replace that warm current was a larger cold current. Since these are the currents that control the weather over much of the globe, such a sudden and enormous change played havoc with the delicate balance of nature and led to tremendous weather disturbances that destroyed everything in their path. Could this terrible situation be prevented? 
Only the Autobots had the ability to do it, and Optimus Prime did not shrink from the responsibility. All right, depraved Megatron. You have played your cards. Now I shall play mine. Prowl was monitoring Autobot surveillance and announced, Our Autobot spy, Bumblebee, is over the target now, Chief. Good. I want to be certain we have the exact location coordinates of this nemesis of all creation so we can smash him finally and forever. Meanwhile, Soundwave was monitoring the radio as Megatron observed the fuel loading. Yelling over the roar of transporter turbines and suction drives, Soundwave announced to his leader, Wonderful blazing rivets, Master! One Earth City is about to go! At that moment, the Autobot Superjet Skyfire zoomed overhead. But no sooner had Megatron raised his fusion cannon toward it than Skyfire was already past and out of sight. Don't worry, Master. That Superjet's communication with its base is garbled. It sounds like Autobot headquarters is going underwater. Ha! We have nothing to fear from them. Optimus Prime is a fool, but he is not stupid. Even up to his neck in water, he is capable of stopping my destruction. Are you sure nothing got through? I'll check my radio, Master, but... Oh! My cable connection was loose, Master! It was my headset that got the message! You mechanical nitwit! Is your tape wound too tight, or what? Suddenly, wave after wave of Autobots swept in, urged on by Optimus Prime. Attack those Autobots! Reduce the Inferno Decepticons and the corrupt Megatron to twisted heaps of hot metal! Diving, relentless and thundering, they released a hailstorm of null rays and missiles. Transporters exploded as the Decepticons mounted a futile counterattack to cover their retreat. Using the mole machine, Megatron sought safety by tunneling into the Earth, shouting, Confounding but not defeated Optimus Prime! I shall be back! I swear! Returned to normal, the Earth waits. The Autobots remain its only defense against Megatron. And the battle continues.